to becoming a sannyasi or a monk, etc., just taking on another identity? I've heard of a few sannyasis who later in life renounced their renunciation. Okay, so we speak a lot in here about the importance of not being too identified with the drama of this particular intersection of space and time of the body. And so... Am I male or female? Am I rich or poor? Do I consider myself beautiful or ugly? Uh, Am I white or black or brown or somewhere in between? Am I a success according to my standards? Am I not a success according to my standards? All All of the ways we judge and identify ourselves. One of the things that... I emphasize so frequently is the importance of breaking away from that because that identity becomes a jail. It's not that it's wrong. It's just that it's it's a jail. It keeps us from identifying as the truth of who we are, which is the consciousness, which is soul. At the core of every single one of us, Regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of your gender, regardless of your bank account, regardless of how successful or how much of a failure you may think you are, at the core is consciousness. At the core is soul. And to get there, We have to let go of our attachment to the identification with the body. The more we identify as, oh, I'm this age, I'm this career, I'm rich and powerful and successful, or I'm poor and a failure and useless and nobody loves me, and either way, the positive and the negative, they they both are jails. Because they both keep us stuck. And so now, now the question is asking, well, well, isn't renouncing that, becoming a sannyasi, becoming a monk, isn't it just another identification? Well, sure. And this is why very few... Let me rephrase that. This is why the really enlightened ones, whether they're wearing orange, whether they're naked, whether they're wearing pants and shirts, whether they're wearing suits and ties, because there's no rule that in order to be enlightened, you have to be wearing orange. The scriptures are full, very purposely, full of stories of saints and sages, rishis, who were householders. We have a beautiful statue, if you go out in Parmar's garden area, of Saint Raidas, a cobbler, who was a, a sage, low caste. The st- statue was of him opening up his chest to show his sacred threads. It's a long story. I won't go into it. But the point being, we, we celebrate. We celebrate the masters regardless of what their role in life was. Are they a cobbler? Are they a king? There's a line that we sing every night that Puja Swamiji leads us in, emphasizing how Bhagwan Krishna God, the divine, forsakes this beautiful feast in the palace of Duryodhan to go and eat sag, greens, which today, of course, everybody knows are really good for you and you should eat them. But traditionally in those days, it was, you know, the food of poor people. To go and eat sag. 
at the home of a poor devotee. We celebrate this. It's not just tolerated. It's not just, yeah, okay. It's celebrated. It's sung about. Statues are erected. Stories in the scriptures are told and emphasized. So an enlightened master, whether they're wearing orange, whether they're wearing pants and a shirt, is going to be one who isn't looking to emphasize to you what role they're playing. And sadly, simply renouncing the world doesn't actually make you automatically enlightened. The world follows you. This is where Puja Swamiji emphasizes all the time the importance of conquering your own mind. And he always shares, you know, he lived in the jungles. He lived in caves in his childhood. He won't let the rest of us go there. But he, he, spent, he spent his childhood living in caves. And he always emphasizes how even in the caves... There were those who hadn't conquered their mind. There were those sitting in the caves, but who were more connected to, you know, what was going on in the world. More focused on, more attached to, more stuck with. So regardless of what our identity may be, what role we're playing, doctor, lawyer, teacher, housewife, sannyasi, yeah, it is all an identity. And ultimately, the goal is not to identify as it. But you have to choose a path of life. I mean, either you get married or you don't. There's no middle path. Either you marry or you don't marry. Either you're celibate or you're not celibate. There isn't, there, there isn't a third option. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be a sannyasi just because you're not married or you're celibate. But it's a choice. Just because you're good in science doesn't mean you have to become a doctor. But it's a choice. Should you find yourself good in science, should you find that that's where your passion lies, what you want to do with your life, you become a doctor. Not that you identify as one. In the same way, if what you want to do in life is dedicate yourself to God. Dedicate yourself to service. Not be encumbered by the pulls and the calls of regular societal family life. Well, taking official vows of renunciation as a monk, as a sannyasi, is one option. It's not the only option, it's one option. Just like being a doctor is not the only thing you could do if you were good in science or wanted to help the world. But regardless of what path we choose, much more important than whether you're dressed in orange, dressed in a suit and tie, dressed in a lab coat, dressed in shorts and a t-shirt, dressed in a tutu, it doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever you're wearing, whatever role you're playing, the most important thing is remembering I'm consciousness. There's no, there's, there's no doctor consciousness, doctor soul, sannyasi soul, married person spirit, monk spirit. It's just, it's spirit, it's soul, it's consciousness. And whether you're a sannyasi, or whether you're anything, the point has to always be to re-identify with the spirit that's wearing this. To identify with the soul that's not bound by this. To identify with the consciousness that's, that's just as much in you as it's here. It's not bound by my orange sari. The only last aspect, though, that's important to mention, 
since the question specifically asked about sannyasis and monks, is as a doctor, as a lawyer, as an engineer, as a teacher, as a housewife, as whatever your identity may be, your role may be, in that role, you represent yourself. As for those of us who have taken vows of sannyas, we actually represent not just ourselves, but we represent the Dharma. And so there's, there's another element to it, not something to identify as, but simply something that needs to be kept in the consciousness. That that which I do, that which I say, how I live is not just a reflection of me as a being and regardless of where I am on this path of enlightenment, but it's actually also a reflection of the Dharma. And so there is an aspect of attentiveness to that that is required when you wear these robes. Because when people see you, what they see is not just you, but they see religion, they see faith, they see dharma. And if I, if I walk out and I act in ways that are not in line with the dharma, it's not just my spiritual path I've hurt. It's the perception that others have of dharma. And so on some level, I feel that those of us who have taken these vows have to be actually attentive on two levels. One, to the fact that, yes, it is just an identity, and ultimately, yes, I am soul, spirit, consciousness, and regardless of whether it's a sannyasi or it's an engineer or it's an orange sari or it's a pair of jeans, it doesn't matter. It's spirit and consciousness. And a very acute awareness and attentiveness to the fact that in this role, you've taken on a responsibility for people's relationship with faith. Regardless of whether you're actually their guru or not, it's irrelevant. When people see you, what they see is a religious person. Even if you're not their religion, what they see is religious person, holy person, man of God, woman of God. And faith is a very beautiful, very crucial, and also very fragile piece of our existence. And so I feel that there's an important element here specifically for taking on a role of a religious person, which is you have to give enough attentiveness to the identity to remember that you represent religion and faith. And that that's very important. Because people's faith in their own leaders, in their own religion, is impacted by how you live. So that's a, a separate aspect, but it's, it's important to mention.